In this video, Phil's going to show you a load of super handy keyboard shortcuts you can use in the Power BI DAX editor that will make authoring formulas super efficient. Be sure to share any shortcuts we missed in the video comments and download the PDF from the link in the video description. I've got this measure here called test value. It's um, calculating a value which is being returned through a switch function. Uh, it doesn't really matter what it's doing. I just needed some code to demonstrate these shortcuts. So let's have a look at the code. And the first thing I'm going to do is if you can't see it quite clearly, I'm going to increase the font size and you can do this by pressing control and plus on your keyboard. And you can reduce the font size by pressing control and minus. And if you go a little bit too far, either way, you can press control and then zero on the numeric keypad to reset the font size to what it was. You can also use this scroll wheel on your mouse by holding down control on the keyboard and then scrolling with the uh, mouse wheel. You can make it smaller or make the font size bigger. And to reset again, it's control and zero on the numeric keypad. But I'm going to leave it a little bit bigger just to make it easier to see in the video. As you can see, I like my code nicely spaced out and formatted, but something I haven't put in here is comments. So let's add a few lines here. Now you'll know that when you press enter, you're basically saying to the DAX editor, I'm done with my editing and go and evaluate my code. So in order to insert a new line, I'm going to hold down shift and enter, and then I'm going to type my comment. Now it's not a very good comment, but again, that doesn't really matter. I'm just demonstrating the keyboard shortcuts to you. So I'm going to press shift enter again to give me a new line underneath there. Now to comment these lines, you can use two minuses, but you have to do each line individually, or you can use two forward slashes, which is the same thing. Or a quicker way is with the cursor on the first line you want to comment out, and then you can use shift and down arrow to go to the second line or subsequent lines you want to comment out. You can press control and forward slash and then control forward slash to uncomment those again. So using control and forward slash will comment out the lines regardless of where the cursor is within that line. You can also go to the line above the uh, text you want to comment out and then move the cursor down using shift and down arrow to the line below you want to comment out and then you can press alt shift a and that wraps all of that text in slash star and ends in star slash which is commenting it out and then to undo that you press alt shift a again personally i prefer just using control forward slash you've already seen that pressing shift enter gives you a new line but there's slightly more to it than that I'll just jump down here to after the true function. If I press shift enter, it actually gives me a new line, but it retains the indentation. If I press alt enter, it gives me a new line, but returns the cursor to the very beginning of the line. And if I press control shift and enter, it gives me a new line above the line where the cursor was. And as you can see, the cursor has been returned to the beginning of the line. So the indentation is not retained. Speaking of indentation, there's a couple of ways that we can indent our code and you should be indenting your code because it makes it much easier to read. You can go to the beginning of the line and then simply press tab or press backspace to remove those tabs. Another way to do indentation is if you hold down control and then the right square bracket, that indents your line further to the right. And if you press control left square bracket, it reduces the indentation. And with that shortcut, you can select multiple lines. And now if I press Control, right square bracket, they're all indented the same amount. And Control, left square bracket, reduces the indentation. If you need to delete lines, there's a couple of ways you can do this, uh, depending on how many lines you need to delete. If it's just a single line, then with the cursor anywhere on that line, press Shift Delete. And if you need to delete multiple lines, you can place your cursor in the line and then just using shift and down arrow or up arrow, select the lines that you need. They don't need to be totally selected. As you can see, line 14, I haven't selected the beginning of that line. And then press control, shift and K. 
If you need to delete smaller sections of a line, you could select the word. So I've double clicked in total there to select that. And then I can press Control Delete. Now if I press Control Delete again, it will delete the word amount up to that bracket. If you've forgotten what a particular function does after you've typed it in, you can bring back the IntelliSense by selecting the function and then pressing Control Space. This gives you an explanation of what the function does, but unfortunately doesn't give you any help with the parameters that the function takes. So I think this is a bit limited in its usefulness. If you need to reorder lines within your code, you can place the cursor on that line and then press Alt down, which will move that line down and Alt up, moves it up. And you can do this with multiple lines. So if with the cursor on line 14, and then shift down just to select the three lines, 14, 15, 16. Now, if I press Alt down, you can see that all three of those lines are moving and Alt up just to put them back where they were. If you want to copy lines, place the cursor in the line. So again, I'm using line 14 and then press Alt, Shift and up, copies that line to the line above. And you've probably guessed with the cursor in line 14 if i press alt shift and down i'm going to get a copy of line 14 below it again this works with multiple lines so place your cursor on the first line you want and then i've used shift down to select lines 14 15 and 16. as you can see they're not totally selected i'll just have uh, some selection across those lines and then alt shift down and i get a copy of all three of those lines if I want to select things, let's say I want to select this word here. That's easy to do. Just double click on it with your mouse. But if I press Control, Shift and then the right arrow, it will keep selecting the next word to the right of the one that's currently selected. And Control, Shift, Left deselects them. If I want to select a single line, put the cursor on that line and press Control, I. And then if I hold down Shift, and either the up or down arrows, I can continue to select multiple lines or deselect them. Let's say I need to rename a variable and who hasn't needed to do that? Of course, if I rename the variable, I need to rename it everywhere that it's used. How am I going to do it? Well, place the cursor in the variable name. So I've clicked into the word rate. Now, if I press control D, that word is selected, the name rate. If I press Control D again, you can see that the next occurrence of rate on line 14 is selected. If I press Control D again, rate on line 16 is selected and Control D again and again until I've selected all occurrences of the word rate. I can now type and replace all of those at the same time. And I'll press Enter just to confirm my changes. And another way to do this is if I click into my new variable name base rate. And now rather than Control D, I can use Control Shift and L and it automatically selects all occurrences of that word. So I can now change them all back to rate again. I can also type in multiple places at the same time. Let's place a cursor here at the beginning of line 15. Now if I hold down Alt, and click on line 17, I now have two cursors, and if I click on line 19, I now have three cursors. So anything I enter now is replicated across all of those cursor positions. So let's tab out, and now I'm gonna enter total amount greater than, let's call it X for now, total amount times, and let's just call it 0 0.3 for now. I'm just showing you an example. So remember, I can place a cursor in multiple positions, click on line 15, click on line 17, click on line 19. And now I'm going to use my shortcuts to delete all of those lines at the same time. So I'm just going to press shift delete. In doing those changes, I've lost the blank lines between the lines of code here, and I like to have blank lines to make it more readable. So I'll use alt and clicking with the mouse button to insert multiple cursors again. And then if I just press shift enter, I'll get my spacing back. If your measure or your DAX code is particularly long and you have lots of functions and brackets, it's very easy to get lost. 
uh, as to where the opening and closing brackets or parentheses for a function is. Now here, this code isn't particularly long, so it's really obvious when I click on line 10 for switch the opening bracket, you can see that the closing bracket on line 22 is highlighted. But if you've got lots and lots of lines of code, you can click beside the opening bracket of a function and then press Control, Shift and Backslash and the cursor will jump to the closing bracket for that function. And it also works the other way around. If your cursor is beside the closing bracket and you press Control, Shift, Backslash, it will jump to the opening bracket or opening parenthesis for that function. If I want to jump to the very beginning of the code, right at the top of the window, I can press Control Home, and to jump to the end, Control End. If I need to jump to the end of a line, I can just press End. And if you need to jump to the beginning of a line, you can press Home. Now the first time you press Home, it will jump to just in front of the first uh, non-white space character. And if you press Home again, it will jump to the very beginning of the line. And finally, if you have lots and lots of lines of code, you can press Control G and then you can go to a particular line number. So let's enter line 20 and you can see that it's highlighted. Press enter and the cursor's at line 20. Well, I hope these shortcuts have shown you something new and I definitely hope that they make your life editing DAX a little bit easier and a little bit more fun. Well, I hope you found these shortcuts useful. You can download the PDF file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.